when this opportunity came in, to become music director in Rome uh, of the Accademia di Santa Cecilia, um, I mean, the first uh, time I came here was just I was invited as a guest conductor, but the it was like an instant uh, love affair. It was a love at first sight, and but between the two of us, there was an, an understanding. And um, when the position became open here, I, it was very exciting for me because I've been doing so much opera, and I needed to balance my musical life a bit more and invest in an, a symphonic uh, orchestra as I have done over the years with, with opera orchestras. But um, I think it's a, a very, very important uh, thing for my identity too. Yes, I was born in London, but I have very strong Italian roots, my parents being from here. Rome is pretty much considered south which, um, of Italy, which is um, where my parents were born. And um, so it, it um, it fits somehow. Well, here they play with a tremendous natural passion. It's a um, very Mediterranean way of playing, the, the string playing, the very vibrato, very uh, often very elegant. I think my team, uh, David Grove's producer and uh, Jonathan Allen, um, engineer, have now, since we've had some practice now recording in this hall, in the, it's a 2,800 seats, quite large, but they've they've got it down now and it's it's a very very exciting um, live sound we are recording these concerts live and, um, and not only we've done 1812 overture Francesca de Rimini Romeo and Juliet some uh, excerpts from Eugene Onegin and uh, um, I think the hall is really good we've had played around with positioning the orchestra in different ways so we've We've had to find our way there a little bit, but I think we've found the ideal now. Well, I'm drawn to Tchaikovsky's music in a way because of its size. I, I, I conduct a lot of long operas and I'm very um, challenged and interested in the challenge of how to make these big structures make sense um, as architectures. Um, I'm very attracted to the emotional content of these pieces and the struggle, obvious struggle that Tchaikovsky was having in, in getting his um, thoughts understood and the, the, the depth to which I think he wants us to, to to dig, to understand his emotions and his sadness and his fervor. I, being from Italian background, I'm very, very drawn to the lyrical component in these pieces. And I love to shape these melodies. They require uh, a rubato that is very vocal, a uh, shaping that is uh, not square. It needs, you need to have a, um, a sense really of, of line but of, of speech also somehow. The melodies 
talk at you, they communicate at you, and you have to not really uh, risk in pushing and pulling the melodies. And um, with this orchestra, I've been able to really find um, a shape for these uh, big arching tunes, I think. I think when you hear the 1812 Overture as we have performed it with, with the choir and with the anthem at the end. Um, you will never want to hear the piece in any other way again uh, because this hymn at the beginning is, first of all, it is so obviously Russian. And there's something about the, the deep bass sound and those very primitive yet um, very universal harmonies that these uh, that the chorus is intoning um, you are drawn in by the people this is, and in every opera of um, any Russian opera the people speaks with a very very loud voice um, musically and psychologically and um, so I'm very very happy that we've gone back to this version it also I think makes the piece much even more festive than it is we um, performed the pieces with uh, synthesized cannons um, when we did the pieces live uh, but we've also prepared a track where we can uh, impose shall we say sort of state-of-the-art uh, cannons and, and uh, I'm sure um, my team is going to do something uh, very spectacular with that. The music is what it is, it's challenging, it's beautiful, it's, it's, it has something to say, it's spectacular, it's uh, wonderfully orchestral and so you have to pour yourself into it and do the best you can. Um, uh, I haven't listened to that many recordings actually, so I haven't been inundated with hundreds of different versions. Uh, you have to, at some point, you have to create your own version, and I think that that's, that's very, very important. Yeah.